Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing or whenever you happen to be watching for that matter and I truly do mean that because you people are beautiful. And you know the other day we had a podcast. By the way, if you don't subscribe to my podcast channel, I'll put the card right up here. Go ahead, hit that. You guys will enjoy it, I think. But anyway, someone asked a question I thought that was pretty interesting is that if you could have any reptile and you could make it whatever size you wanted. So let's say you have an alligator like this cute little monkey here that's only about three months old and this would be an adult. You know, could you make this into an adult this size? It would be the most adorable thing. Or you could go the other way. Maybe take a small reptile and make it really large. What would it be? So today I'm going to show you a couple things that I think of. And I'm wondering what you guys think down in the comments. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love giant alligators. But you got to admit, if you could have a full-grown alligator that looked like this little monkey right here, would that be absolutely ridiculous? Let's start with one that I personally would really love. And I've said this all the time time if I could have a Burmese python that stayed exactly the same size as Jeffrey with the same temperament as Jeffrey I would be all over it now there are dwarf Burmese pythons but typically they're squirrely they're a little bit of aggressive I'm talking about a mainland huge temperamented Burmese python but got this big I mean this is like the perfect size snake for me I think it's big enough to be impressive but not so big that even like a four year five year old could handle it right so it's just amazing and again the beautiful temperament uh, Again, there are dwarf berms, and I think over generations, we could probably breed them to be very calm like Jeffrey, but I'm talking about right now. We're just wishing, right? And I wish that I could have a Burmese just like Jeffrey, the same color, same pattern, same size, everything, and that it would stay that way its whole life. Now let's go the other way and make something larger. Could you imagine a beautiful gargoyle gecko like this one here? as a giant, like let's say the size of an alligator, or at least the size of Elvis or something like that. I mean, a three foot, four foot long gargoyle gecko, would that be the most insanely cool thing? And again, I can't wait to read your comments on things. Again, whether you wanna make something small, miniature, or you wanna make something large that's already small, I mean, it's endless, right? And I'm not getting into mammals. We all know that if you could have a miniature giraffe, it, everyone would want that. I'm talking about just reptiles here. We've got Mike here of course, and he is going to put butterscotch back on. Uh, you've been working with butterscotch for a couple weeks. You feel all right with her? Uh, she's pretty fast. She's pretty fast. So I'm going to, as you guys know, when we work with big snakes, we always want two people here just in case something happens. But I'm not going to help them. I'm just going to watch them. So okay. let's have at it. Yeah, she, you got her out okay? All right. She'll go back. She goes back way easier than coming in, so she's going to be fine. Of course, butterscotch, the reason we keep her in a top cage probably isn't really that smart because, of course, she can strike out and stuff like that at face level. But she's really fun to feed up there, and that's why we really keep her up there. But she's she's a miniature Lucy. I'm not going to lie to you. She looks a lot like Lucy, and she acts a lot like Lucy. One day she's friendly, one day she's not. Uh, so we'll see what happens. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm actually here. If anything does happen, I will help. But... Uh, uh, she's just in a nice little soap right now, and uh, go ahead, have clean at it. Clean the cage, it's all done, so. So clean the cage up, she's Hopefully all good to go. Uh, pretty well. Let's get a little bit of shed off. <laughs> Whoop. Of course, we always talk about the shedding issue, right? Is that, you know, you, you, it's not a problem to help a snake come out of shed when it's kind of stuck in shed. And butterscotch oftentimes, much like a lot of our retics do this, where in the wintertime when it kind of dries out, uh, and I talk about humidity earlier, try to get that humidity up. We just soak them and you can see that Mike is just kind of helping it kind of slowly come off. And it just make her look nice, she'll be happy, and that's a good thing for her to get that shed off. You don't want that shed on there because of course bacteria can form beneath that. It's supposed to come off, right? So uh, as long as you're not trying to shed an animal early, it's actually really helpful for them to get it off in a soak. And if it's not coming off, if you're having a problem, just soak it longer, right? So if you soak a snake long enough, it'll peel off super, super simple, and it's not traumatic for the animal. As a matter of fact, it almost seems like it might be soothing in a way, really. So uh, she's looking good. So now let's uh, let's go ahead and get her back in. She's fine. She's not bitey or anything like that. She's no, just being, she's just fast. She is just very fast. For a snake, it's kind of crazy how retics are like that, right? It's like retics are like a giant snake that have the energy of a small snake which is makes them really interesting you see just a little bit of shed right here we'll just kind of peel that right there there you go uh, let's get that last bit of shed off 
There it goes. She don't pee now, we're doing great. <laughs> yeah, as long as she doesn't pee on you, you're doing good. So, so that's it, you did good, Mike, see? Way to go. Give him a round of applause. Now listen, Al is a giant toad. I mean, you know, one of the biggest toads on the planet. You know, there's no doubt that this is a giant. But could you imagine if this thing was the size of Matilda or even larger, like a four foot long toad? I mean, how freaking awesome would that be? The only problem is these guys eat anything. I think they, a uh, four foot long toad would eat little babies or something like that. So you'd have to be careful, but could you imagine? It could probably jump like 20 foot. Oh my gosh, this, I mean, this is pretty fun just to imagine and just to dream about animals that are different size than they would. I mean, it's super cool. So I was glad that someone brought that up on the podcast. It really had my brain thinking for the last couple days, so I couldn't wait to share it with you guys. And I know some of you guys are dying for a 100-foot tarantula. Wonder that transformed a tiny insect into the 100-foot spider that was now ravaging the panic-stricken countryside. And I'm not gonna lie, although I think I'd be pretty scared if a 100-foot tarantula was crawling down the street, in one way I think it'd be pretty darn cool, at least if it was something like Zombie, the rosehair tarantula. Now you put a big Goliath bird-eating attitude, or maybe a Cobalt Blue or a, a OBT, uh, yeah, I don't want a 100-foot one of those guys, because they'd be going around just killing everybody. But an animal like Zombie here, 100-foot, I think it'd be pretty darn cute. I know that there's already a lot of giant snakes. Speaking of giant snakes, someone's very curious over here at what we're doing. Hey, what are you doing, girl? All right. <laughs> of course, my girl Daisy. But could you imagine a Honduran milk snake? I mean, something red like that. That's the thing about giant snakes. There's no red giant snakes. If you could have a Honduran milk snake that was 18, 20 foot long. Now, granted, they are kind of fast and stuff like that. They would be a pretty uh, fun animal to take care of. There's no doubt about that. But nevertheless, that would be pretty cool. Uh, again, it's endless, isn't it? I mean, you could go from smaller animals to get huge, uh, big animals that stay small. I mean, it's a uh, gosh, I wish we could genetically engineer to change these guys because we could have a field day with all these animals. <laughs> Another wild snake. So that's enough. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Down in the comments, let me know what you guys think. I want to hear what animals you want to have smaller, which ones you want to have bigger, which ones are. I'll, I'll pick the like top five ones. I'll post them on my community page and we'll do a poll on them. And the winner of that poll, maybe I'll send you guys some sort of in the winner of the poll and whoever started it. And I'll actually send you guys a couple pieces of merch, so I'll reach out to you guys, but uh, I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about it. Remember to always continue to improve things. You know, every time you can even do one little thing, organization, stuff like that is huge. So this is just a little back area that we hang our hoses for all the drains and stuff like that. So uh, we just want to make it more organized. So I'm going to hang a couple more of these things up so I can actually hang more hoses up so that things aren't all over the ground. Just makes it neat, easy. Everyone knows where things are. It goes back where it's supposed to go and things like that just make my job easier and everyone else's job because the worst thing you ever want to do is when you're looking for a hose trying to find it so uh, now we're gonna put these up and everything will be good And there you have it, just a little organization that just makes everyone's life a little easier. Here's my big yellowtail Kribo. I mean, this thing is absolutely a massive snake. And I'm hoping that we get a chance to breed these guys this year. Of course, we have blacktail Kribos and then the yellowtail Kribos. The yellowtail Kribos, believe it or not, are a little bit larger. I mean, you can see this snake literally is probably a good seven, seven and a half foot long. Pretty whippy. When I first got this little monkey, he was out of control and he would actually even like to bite and stuff like that. Now it's 
actually gotten pretty calm. It's a, you know, it's a little bit crazy when it comes to movement, but at least it's not a biter. You can imagine a seven foot snake that has a strike range of about three foot with this type of whippiness coming at you. I had some fun times with this guy for sure, but hopefully, if any luck, we'll get some babies and the female he's breeding is spectacular. And here she is. Now, I'll be honest with you, she could probably be a little bit bigger and a little bit more beefy, but she's just really turned on in the last six months eating well, so I think there's a chance that we can put enough food into her to potentially breed here in the next month or two. And you may say, well, gosh, that male is a lot larger than the female. Well, when it comes to Kribos, at least in my experience, is that you kind of want the male to be a little bit bigger because the females every now and then can get a little bit cantankerous during breeding season, and they are snake eaters. They will eat their mate, if you know what I mean. Now, again, I'm sure that if you had similar size, you should be completely fine, but in our cases, typically our males are bigger than our females. So again, this is a gorgeous snake right here. I hope she produces, again, maybe another couple months of beefing her up, and maybe we'll get lucky and get some eggs here this spring. Pretty excited, guys, that this is gonna be our first female that lays eggs in 2021. She is literally probably days away from ovulation. This is actually just a pinstripe that is het for piebald, and it's bred to a pastel pied male, meaning that I could produce, you know, lemon blast pieds, pin pieds, pastel pieds, pieds, all that type of stuff. And it's a pretty big girl, so I'm assuming she'll probably have eight, nine, maybe even 10 eggs. So that's pretty excited, guys. I mean, we literally are just a month and a half away from the first clutch of 2021, and then it's game on. We're gonna be having tons of clutches as the year goes on. So pretty excited just to say that you can see that kind of glow before they go, where she's just really lightening up and glowing. So I can't wait to get the first eggs of the season. Remember last year when I told you I wanted to kind of up my orange dream game? Well, these are a couple of my holdbacks. I absolutely love them. This is actually a super orange dream pastel over here. Again, just a pastel and super orange dream. Look at the color on that one. And then the other one is actually a super Super Orange Dream Lemon Blast. So that would be a Super Orange Dream Pastel and a Pinstripe. But I tell you, what, I love these guys. And my buddy Ozzy over at Ozzy Boyd's is the one that actually produced the very first Orange Dream and he has ridiculous Orange Dream stuff. So these are just a couple of the animals I held back, but I am excited for the future. These are both females, so they're gonna be really good adding them into some more Orange Dream stuff. Just starting the game. I'm a little bit behind, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm about 10 years late on this project, but hey, I'm getting started and I'm gonna have a great time with it. Little shameless plug, Laura's been adding ball pythons to the website every single day. This is actually an Invisiball. It's actually a Russo and a Mystic that is bred together, which is just really, really cool. Again, white with a little bit of pattern. And again, every single day, Laura's adding stuff to the BHB Reptile site. So if you're interested in a ball python, just go over there and head over. I very rarely ever shout it out, but Laura's been working really hard to get a bunch of ball pythons on the site. So that was pretty fun. I mean, what big animal would you like to have small? What small animal would you like to have big in the comments? I can't wait to read all about it. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor hit this playlist over here you can watch one or two videos it really helps my click through rate and i appreciate you so much while you're at it if you don't mind could you write up here can you subscribe to my podcast channel we have three podcasts a week i think you guys are going to enjoy it on this side we're getting close to that three million mark please subscribe to this vlog channel turn your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to somebody and i promise i'll see you tomorrow